and the one with the rifle gets killed. The one who is following picks up the rifle and shoots. Welcome to the third episode of Pick Up the Rifle and Shoot series featuring my Springfield Armory U.S. Rifle Caliber 30 M1, more commonly known as the M1 Garand, John C. Garand's masterpiece. The M1 is best known for its use in World War II as the U.S. main service rifle, but also continued to serve even in the Vietnam War. Today, the M1 is alive and well, primarily thanks to the CMP, the Civilian Marksmanship Program. The CMP was created by U.S. federal law for its citizens to promote rifle practice, marksmanship, safety, and competition, and in doing so also provide firearms, such as the M1, to qualified purchasers. And so in 2017, CMP delivered my very first M1 Garand. And here she is, my Springfield Armory US Rifle Caliber 30 M1, serial number 1006431. Purchasing an M1 from the CMP does require approving documents to determine eligibility, as outlined on their website, and orders can be mailed in or purchased in person at their north or south stores. The M1s are separated into categories called grades. They are described in great detail on the website so the purchaser will know what to expect. A caveat with mail-in orders that it is luck of the draw on what you will get from the grade you choose but sometimes sticky note requests may be fulfilled. And in my case, I sticky noted for the best condition Springfield Armory field grade available for my first mail-in order in the RM1 field grade category. I wanted an M1 Garand from the original manufacturer of Springfield Armory in turned in condition with hopes of being of a great shooter. And not only it is exactly what I got, but to top it off, the serial number dates to November 1942, World War II production. Absolutely amazing. Let's take a closer look. First off is the receiver, which is absolutely beautiful. The M1 nomenclature and serial number markings on the heel are very crisp and clear, which has also has been lead dipped. You can see it has a different shade than the rest of the receiver. She has a beautiful USGI stock with a rack number of 100, which I believe is also her original stock, and I'll circle back to this a little bit later. And she has an HRA Harrington and Richardson post-war bolt. Let's flip her to the other side. Here again is another view of the beautiful lead dipped heel and her markings. Continuing on, she has a post-war rear sight Her op rod is Springfield Armory post-war with the relief cut. The barrel appears to be the original and it is marked S-A 11 1942 for Springfield Armory and has no frosting or pitting and has very strong rifling all the way up to the clean crisp crown. On the business end, she has a Springfield narrow base gas cylinder sawn relief cut gas lock chamfered, and a poppet valve type gas screw manufactured by Henry Owens Company. From the top of the receiver, she has a long fork riveted follower, and the trigger housing is Springfield Armory Manufacture. Circling back to the stock with a rack number 100, I requested a serial number search in the CMP forms, which the Springfield Research Service database was used. Although there was no direct hit, the serial number appears to be in the range of it being delivered to the USMC Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, which makes sense since there is a rack number on the stock. I like to think it was used for basic training, but who knows? I'm hoping my further research can confirm it. Continuing on, CMP also provided the armor's hang tag, showing the muzzle wear of two and a throw of four plus on a barrel, and some additional information. 
They also provided the certificate of authenticity that the rifle was sold to the purchaser. And of course the instruction book that you see below. They also provided accessories including a hard case, one end block clip, and a web sling. Here are the markings and drawing numbers that I can find on their respective parts. Some of the markings and drawing numbers are correct for the rifle, and others are definitely post-war. Now let's go see how she shoots. Off to the 25 yard range. My first time shooting her was back in 2017, in which I zeroed her for 25 yards with no problems or issues. Since moving 2 years ago, I re-zeroed her again at 25 yards with the same ammo. Privy Partisan PPU M1 Garand 150 grain. After adjusting my rear sight elevation, 5 clicks from the bottom, and with no adjustment of windage, still right on the center, I proceeded to confirm my zero shooting 5 rounds, holding center mass, point of aim, point of impact. The first three rounds hit in the same hole, and the next two are all user error. My breathing was off for the first, and I jerked the trigger for the last. As expected, no issues from the ammo or rifle, since I've shot her before in 2017. Now let's see how she does at 200 yards. With the sights untouched from my 25 yard zero, I proceeded to shoot 5 rounds using a 6 o'clock hole. The target I'm using is the NRA-C 200 yard target, which has a 13 inch black circle. I also put on a shoot and see 12 inch circle target so I could see the hits on my spotting scope. I went downrange to confirm what I saw in my spotting scope, a 3 inch group. I am impressed. I was 4 inches to the right and 4 to 5 inches low from center. I'm not going to adjust the sights just yet, for the purpose of this video is to measure what the rifle is capable of and what I'm capable of, and 5 rounds isn't enough. So back to the firing line and load up another 5 rounds.
As you can see, three of the rounds hit the same area from the first group. That's after I adjusted my NPA, my natural point of aim. I knew my first two shots would be off when I came back on target, getting ready to fire the third round. My 1942 M1 Garand CMP field grade can do a 4 inch group at 200 yards. This is 2 MOA with the ammo that I'm using. I'm very pleased. I do plan on adjusting the sights for a 6 o'clock hole to hit center to target at 200 yards, in which I'll make another follow up video in the near future. So there you have it, my first Garand, a 1942 Springfield Armory field grade from the CMP still doing it after all these years. Owning an M1 Garand is a dream come true, and experiencing one firsthand is so fulfilling, and it gave me a deeper appreciation of her service in our country's wars and conflicts. This M1 Garand is truly my favorite semi-auto rifle, a rifle with so much history that I'm thankful to experience, thanks to the CMP. Thanks for watching this episode, and stay tuned for more.